Hey, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's Matt Green, your host for Real Insights Live. Super excited about our show today. I've got just an absolute phenomenal guest. Uh, the guy is crushing it. So it is May, uh, what is it? The May 16th of 2018. And uh, my guest today is uh, Rookie of the Year for Keller Williams, Utah uh, region for 2017. He is a real estate agent in the Orem office, the Keller Williams Orem office here in Orem, Utah. And uh, very, very excited to have him joining me, Dwayne Richens. Um, and, and we're going to just talk a little bit about um, you know, what he did to have such great success his first year in the business. Uh, the continued success that he's seeing currently in his business. And it's just a, a phenomenal opportunity, I think, for us to better understand uh, the habits and activities of great success within our industry, within our business. And so if you're thinking about getting your license or have thought about at one point getting your real estate license or you're currently licensed as an agent and not getting the results uh, that you want, uh, stay tuned. This is going to be a really uh, great insight to someone who's succeeding at a very high level. Uh, as we go through the show today, please be sure to uh, like or share uh, the show if you see uh, value in it. And certainly uh, post your questions and comments below, and we'll do what we can during the course of the show to answer those. Uh, so with that said, uh, Dwayne, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining me. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, awesome. So if you don't mind, uh, I, I, I think there's always huge value and, and some of the feedback I get from people that listen to the show is that they love to hear a little bit about uh, the, the history or, or the lead up to you or the, our guests deciding to become real estate agents. So if you don't mind, give us, um, you know, what, what were you doing pre real estate licensure and uh, what kind of led up to you getting your license? So I've kind of got a crazy story. I went to college, got a degree, um, studied radiologic sciences, and ended up- Studied what? Radiologic sciences. So I became an MRI tech. That's what my bachelor's is in. Okay. Um, I went on to- That's not the normal path for real estate agents, I don't no, think. No, it's not. <laughs> so I went on to specialize in cardiac imaging, um, ended up going to Germany and helping develop some things to get rid of AFib or heart murmurs. Um, went from there to teach at a- primary children's like hospital at Stanford in California. And wow. then I dove off that path and became a door to door salesman. And my parents wanted to shoot me, but um, <laughs> I maxed out the most I could do um, at a W2 employment. And so I went to sell for Vivint and was there for eight years and um, started buying investment properties and decided, you know what, I like this real estate stuff and I see there's a great need for good agents. And so I dove into the real estate path. Interesting. So what were you selling door to door? Curious systems. Uh, security systems. Yep. Security systems. Okay. So uh, I'm sure that helped you develop some good habits that uh, has lent itself to your business as a real estate agent. Yes. So what was it that was kind of intriguing to you about um, getting licensed? Why make the change? Uh, just all the agents that I had dealt with in real estate when I was buying investment properties for myself, I just didn't feel like he had the edge. They didn't answer their phone as promptly as I, I would have thought. Customer service wasn't very good. Um, I just felt like there was a lot of need in someone that would get out and hustle. And then I felt like taking it door to door and showing people that side of, of real estate, there was a big demand for it mm -hmm. and an open space that I didn't feel like anybody was doing. So I felt like there was a great opportunity to dive into. Yeah, awesome. So as you thought about transitioning from your previous career path, which was dramatically different than sales, I mean, what was it that compelled you to do that? Um, probably just the, the, the volume that I, I felt like I could do diving into a new field that, that hadn't been touched. Hmm. And, and was there some element of it that allowed for uh, not having really a cap on well, maybe more control of your time, being your own boss, no cap on your income. I mean, were those things? Well, I was already doing that with um, Vivint, with okay. the door-to-door -door sales. Yeah. Um, but that being said, uh, I had to move every summer. And typically we'd go out of state, it was summer sales. Um, I started at zero every year. So I could go out and be top 10, which I was for the last five years I was at Vivint. But I started at zero every year. It wasn't like I got a clientele build up, a database, any of that stuff. So. 
that was intriguing as far as real estate goes is as soon as I build a big database, I will continue to get clients from that rather than start at zero every year. God, that's such a great point. I, it's interesting. I talk to agents. Uh, I, I talk to agents a lot about that, um, that if they do the right things for, during the first three to five years, it gets dramatically easier over time, right? I can see that already. And, and, and so often, yeah, so often agents um, aren't doing the things that allow them to have a, a more uh, repeatable business over time that gets more leveraged and, and return business. So uh, it's great that you saw that. So um, I, I mistakenly uh, had announced that you did 10 million in volume your first uh, 12 months in the business. And uh, you're great to, to share with me that it was actually 18.1 million in volume. That, that's out of this world. That's unheard of. I mean, a lot of guys that have been in the business for a long time haven't had that kind of success. So first of all, congratulations. Thank you. And, and second, if you could share with our audience, what what has allowed you to do that? Like what, what are some of the things that you felt like really went towards you getting those kinds of results? Um, quite honestly, I feel like I've been blessed. I, I don't feel like I'm the best at anything I do, but I definitely am competitive. Um, and I wanted to come out and make a name and get started in the right way. Um, it would help with recruiting. It would help with all of that. So I, I set out number one to be the best rookie and that was my goal from day one. Mm. And so when I, when I started out um, my first month, I did 10 deals or I had 10 under contract my first month in real your, estate. Your first month. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so, so tell us about that. How, how's that possible? How did you do that? Well, I told my wife, um, you know, we're leaving a crazy good income um, selling a security system and I'm starting a new path. Um, I'm going to dive in full bore and, and it might take me some time to figure this out, but plan on me being gone for 12 hours a day. And so I literally came into the office, was there by eight, making phone calls, didn't know not even the slightest what I was doing. <laughs> and by noon, I was knocking doors till eight, nine o'clock at night every day. And things just started falling into place and I started getting deals under contract and I just kept pushing forward from that point. It's always interesting to me that people want the results uh, in many cases, but aren't willing to do the, the work sometimes. Um, and, and, you know, shocker, it sounds like you worked a lot of hours and, and, yeah. and yeah, and, and really pressed, uh, pressed the, 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 the time limits, like, let's get this ramped up. So that was one of my questions about when you started the business, a lot of people, um, I guess it's uh, multiple questions, but one I would say, or I'd ask is, did you have a really specific plan to start out with? You mentioned that you didn't know what you were doing, but did you, uh, did you have a kind of a clear intentional plan when you showed up that first day? And, and what, it sounds like there was no really transition time. It was just like all in, I'm going for it. I'm not working part-time at one business and, and trying this out as we go. It's like, I'm, I'm going all in. And, and uh, correct me if that's wrong, but then in addition to that, did you have uh, a clear plan on what your activities were going to be right out of the gate? And, and what support did you have relative to what you were going to say? Like what scripts were you using or were you just kind of winging it as you went? I, w I was winging it. I really didn't know what I was going to do. Um, I just knew at the end of the day, I needed to find um, people that wanted to list their house. I needed to be different than everybody else. I needed to outwork them because I did have any experience. So I used my sales experience from the prior years and background of dealing with doctors, teaching doctors. And so that didn't bother me to talk to people that had high end homes. And I mean, at the end of the day, my goal was just to help someone buy or sell a house. And that was the only objective I had. I didn't have any scripts. Um, I just went out and, and talked with people, question based selling a lot. Um, I still did Vivint for six months um, and real estate when I first transitioned. So I did do both jobs until. I realized that I could make so much more doing just real estate. And so I stayed doing both, both jobs for a little while there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, it's interesting. One of the things I've, I talk frequently about and one of the big uh, kind of ahas or, or realizations that I had at some point in my career, I don't remember when I've been in this business for a long time, was that just um, doing the work is way more important than uh, how perfect either my scripts are or what I'm sending out. Uh, I just talked about this the other day in a class I was teaching, like it, even if you just get on the phone and you're blowing it, like your scripts are terrible, you're far better off and more likely to get business than not getting on the phone, like never have made the, made the call or never have knocked the door. And so mm -hmm. I think 90% of success is just showing up and doing the tasks. 
And, and then as we get better at our scripts and get better at uh, our skill set, uh, then our conversion ratio goes up. But there's nothing that impacts our success and conversion more than actually doing the work, just showing up and making the calls and, t and making the touches. Um, and and it, I, I, I have a hard time believing that your, your scripts weren't dialed in to some to extent after years of door-to-door -door sales. Um, but certainly transitioning to a new industry, you're not gonna have those real estate scripts dialed in. So just doing the work uh, and being there makes that a dramatic impact, I think. Uh, so how many transactions did you do? Were you, were you focused on a specific uh, target, uh, price range, et cetera? Or um, you know, give us an idea of how many transactions you did to make up that 18.1 million in your first year. So I did 89 transactions my first uh, year. Um, but my target was, um, Jimmy Rex, a lot of you guys know Jimmy Rex. I knew that he had done 66 transactions his first year. <laughs> I wanted to beat Jimmy. Um, you're not competitive, are you? No, not at all. <laughs> and then the other idea that I had, I went to family reunion. Um, so Keller Williams annual convention, family reunion. Yep. I went down there to that and I went to the rookies, um, the rookie of the year, of course, to see what they did and what volume I had to do to beat that. And that was the other marker that I set. The rookie of the year, the prior year, did 14 million in volume. And so that was the other markers. Like, I don't know what the new one will do, but I've got to beat 14 million in order to stand a chance. And so those were kind of my numbers. It's just hit, hit, hit past the ones that have been number one before. Yeah, good for you. I think a lot of times when we see someone that has significant volume in their first year, we, we immediately... Um, maybe as a point to, to try to justify it or whatever, we assume, oh, maybe they had just a huge transaction that they got lucky on and that impacted that. But if you did that number of transactions, um, there's very little luck that was associated with the kind of volume you did, right? It was very purposeful. The other yeah, question, was, go know, ahead, sorry. Listings. No, I take every listing I could, um, every buy I could um, from 150,000 to, I had some million dollar listings, um, but I would take everything I possibly could. So well, that's another question. I mean, how does a new guy get a million plus listing? I, I think there's a belief, right, that a new guy can't take a, a big listing like that. Is that just a myth or what? Um, it is. I think um, it's just a matter of having the confidence to deal with people like that and tell them what you do different. I remember my first week in the business, I went on a call that was a for sale by owner up on the East Bench of Holiday. And it was a 900 and some thousand dollar listing and sitting down with him my first week and not even knowing the slightest thing what to say, but getting the listing over multiple people that came through. So how, what did you say? How did you do that? It's what I do different. I mean, I'm willing to go out and hustle. Most people stick a sign in the yard and they're gonna sit back and wait for someone else to, to buy it. I'm gonna go knock every one of your neighbors and expose it. Um, showed him some statistics that 40% of people buy within a neighborhood, whether it's from family members or friends or someone they know wants to live by them. And so I'm going to go uncover all those rocks and find who's looking and that there would be no one that would work harder to earn their business than I would just show him a bunch of different statistics and what I do different and how I've succeeded. Yeah. Awesome. I, it was interesting. My interview last couple of weeks ago uh, with a really talented uh, partnership, they communicated the thing that really had differentiated them at, at doing it about six and a half million that then drove to, I think it was 25 million or 30 million, some really great number in production. They said the thing that really triggered that growth was, uh, confidence when they just really started to become very confident in the value that they provide. And I think that could be also, um, you, you know, transposed on uh, fearlessness, right? I, I think when you step into the job, clearly you are fearless about just stepping in and going for it and having the conversations. And, and, and your confidence was around your commitment to, to working harder than anyone else. And, and you can hear that echoed in your voice or, or shared in your voice that that confidence may not be necessarily in years of experience, but you're confident in your work ethic and your ability to figure out ways to get things done. And, and, and I can hear that in the way you, you, you speak, but both the fearless, uh, fearlessness and confidence, I'm sure are the two things that um, really allowed you to have such great success, such, such a, at an early stage in your career, right? So a lot of people um, that have great success right out of the gate, uh, a lot of times have joined a team, but you didn't choose to go that route. You solo agent on your own. Um, did you think about that at all? Was that a conversation or? Well, or I actually consider? did join a team for about a month. Okay. Um, when I first came into real estate, I went with Jimmy Rex 
because mm. he was the guy that was killing it and he was yeah. my first connection to KW. Um, he was, he's a guy that loves to travel. And so the first couple of weeks that I was on his team, he was in Africa <laughs> and I was trying to figure out what to, what to do and how to do it. And I'd gotten enough stuff under contract that I knew if I was going to build this business the way I wanted to, I needed to fall on my face and figure it out. And I bounced and, and started my own team shortly after that. I capped um, within a month and a half of being an agent and kind of just started at that point learning systems or, or failing is what I was doing. I was trying to figure out what everybody else had learned over the last five or 10 years as being agents in my first year so that I could be a good team lead. Nice. Awesome. Yeah. J Jimmy's hilarious. That's uh, I actually interviewed him for the show uh, probably a year ago. And um, I think it was the night before he's like in some Asian country. I see online that he's posted. I'm like, dude, we have like, we have an interview tomorrow morning. Are you going to be ready? And sure enough, he was, he showed back up every time I turn around, he's somewhere exotic. So I, know, I love it. Cracks me up. Uh, that's awesome. So after a couple of weeks, you realized, okay, I, I can do this. I just need to fail my, just commit to failing forward, right? Being willing to fail my way forward and figure this out, lean on those who have succeeded and, and engage and, and I can do this. And clearly, uh, but that worked looking back you. though, Matt, I mean, I wished I would have stayed on a team. Um, once mm -hmm. I got so many deals under contract, I had to stop working because I didn't know what I was doing. Number one. Number two, all the phone calls, the inspections, the appraisals, the other agents, the clients. So I got into a pattern of doing, getting 10 under contract, and then I would stop for a month until they close, and then I'd go out and do 10 more under contract, just because I couldn't keep up until I realized I needed administrative assistant, transaction coordinators. I didn't realize what I didn't know. So I feel like being on a team would have helped me even increase my numbers a ton if I'd have just been smart enough to do it. Cause you would have had that support network behind you to like really handle all that volume of business that you were. Yeah. So how have you handled that? What, to tell us a little bit about what your team looks like now. At what point did you hire help? Tell us a little bit about that process. So months free, I hired my first transaction coordinator and um, dove into that. Was that uh, a full-time person that was working for you or was that an outside time. vendor? No, it was a full-time person that came directly to work for our D2D team. Um, and that that saved immense amounts of time and then we just kept failing forward and and we hired an administrative assistant about six months in and um i didn't try to recruit whatsoever to build a team at that point because i needed to get systems in place and learn what i was doing first and become successful my primary goal was to be number one and be the best at what i did so then i could recruit to it later and have the systems in there know what to do um and so we didn't start recruiting until probably the last three months. So when you talk about recruiting, you're saying agent support, agent team members for your team. Right. Sharp, sharp agents that I feel like would do really well, be selective. I had a lot of agents ask me if they could join our team and, and I, I took a lot of agents um, and a lot of them fell off because I wasn't ready to put the time into them. So a lot of my leadership skills weren't ready at that point. Um, we had some that stuck. We've got um, nine agents now on the team. And um, we're just looking to blow this thing up and grow at this point. So you're at nine agents now. First of all, I got to commend you because you, you, whether you know it or not, you followed a, a pattern that most agents don't when they start to build their team. And, and it's just perfectly laid out in the Millionaire Real Estate Agent book that many of us are familiar with. And uh, despite that, it's a, I think it's uh, not natural for us to think about hiring and developing our first the the people that can help us develop our systems so it sounds like you hired two admin people first a uh, transaction coordinator and then a, an additional admin person after that really got your systems and models dialed in and then started to bring on sales support and, and so frequently we see uh, agents as they start to develop their team um, not bring on the administrative support at that level before they start growing their, their kind of agent team members. And, and it, it tends to not be very, it's, it's kind of out of model, at least a model that we've seen succeed over and over again. So um, was that intentional? Were you following, you know, the, well, the millionaire real estate agent book or was that on accident or was that just, you, you just kind of knew inherently that you needed to, to take that route? No, I can't take credit at all. I mean, it is the MREA. We did follow the Millionaire Real Estate Agent book, but it came from my coach. I, I dove into coaching first 
um, from maps coaching. Mm. Um, Sue Langston was, has been amazing and teaching me a lot of the systems that I needed to get into place um, just so that I would be ready to build a team when that time comes. So she helped a ton with all of our systems. Awesome. So was that mastery coaching, like full-time uh, mastery coach? And at what point did you hire her in your business? Oh, probably within the first four months of me being an agent. Wow. Awesome. And, and what led to that? I mean, what compelled you to do that? Cause that's a big commitment, right? It's a thousand dollars a month or so. It is. Yep. It's, it was a thousand dollars a month. Um, it was just the fact that I wanted to grow faster. I wanted to get the help. I didn't know what I didn't know. And if I was going to try to do it on my own, it would take me years to figure out what I needed to do. And so I wanted the fast track to get where other people are at and be able to go compete. Yeah. Smart, super smart. I think a lot of us are fearful of spending that kind of money, uh, not believing or having faith that it can, you know, really generate a significant return on us. And, and that's really where, where that geometric progression idea comes I I into place that, that Gary Keller talks about in the one thing, right? When we, when we put the right dominoes in the right order, huge, huge success can show up in a very short period of time. Um, and, and of course, you know, many of you've read that book, but it's that, that two inch domino can knock over a three inch domino, which can then knock over domino one and a half times its size. And, and when you line up the right dominoes, you knock over a huge domino within a very short period of time. And that idea of geometric progression, um, you know, really is dependent upon who's helping you put the right, the right dominoes in the right order. And, and when you're working with a coach, the right coach, they can help you do that much more quickly than you trying to figure that out on your own. And clearly, um, it sounds like you've had that kind of uh, experience. Yeah, it's been great. Yeah. Do you still coach with her now then? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Good for you. So what, as you really started um, thinking about your business um, over these past 12 months, what are some of the biggest challenges that you've had um, and or you're still facing right now that you're navigating uh, to get to that next level. And, and, and maybe as part of that, share with us what your goal is for your business in 2018. What, what is your intention as far as production this year? Um, as far as the first part of it, our, our biggest challenge we're dealing with right now is learning how to market. Uh, my, my strategies and the way I do things are completely different than an orthodox um, a real estate agent. Um, we've done most of our marketing door to door. And um, so sending out 33 touch, eight by eights, um, all these different systems and programs, we're, we're having to learn that to keep in touch with clients. I do a client event every month rather than every quarter. Mm -hmm. um, so we do things a little bit different than the, than the regular model. So I need to get with model and implement all the model stuff as well as what we're doing. Um, so that's, that's probably our biggest challenge now is to learn. Um, my administrative assistant, Jeanette, has been amazing in, in diving in. She has no real estate background. Um, and she's been doing our transactions for a while and, and now is diving into that role. We've got a transaction coordinator that we're hiring full time just to do transactions. And she'll continue just to do the marketing and, and help dial out that aspect. So um, for goals this year, personally, I want to sell 100, close 100 transactions myself. Um, and I want to get our team to 25 people and be able to do over, sorry, um, want to be able to close, um, $25 million in, in volume this year. Nice. Nice. Awesome. Good for you. It's interesting. I, th I think, you know, that's, uh, one of the challenges of getting to that next level in many cases, when we start to, as this individual agent start to hit that glass ceiling, we realize that. Um, prospecting alone is, is a limited uh, opportunity for us, right? There's only so many doors you can knock. There's only so many phone calls you can make. So how do you start to bring in a marketing element into your business that's a leveraged activity that helps you generate the results? And, and you know, we really focus as a company um, and, and in our coaching that it needs to be prospecting based and, and marketing enhanced. But that marketing piece can ultimately, when done right, be really a great deal of leverage for us uh, because we are limited on the amount of time that we have personally to prospect. And so, um, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, 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 and it's a challenge for sure. And, and I think it sounds like you've got some good models that you're following to accomplish that. Uh, I just wanted to recognize a number of the people that have joined us and watching us. We've got a, a great live group watching us. Someone, a buddy of ours from a team leader from uh, South Africa on Wayne. Thanks for being on. Uh, so you got people from all over the world uh, joining us to listen to 
uh, Dwayne and the successes he's having. So anyways, appreciate you guys all uh, participating today. Uh, certainly feel free if you'd like uh, to ask Dwayne a question to uh, post your comments and questions below and we will uh, make every effort to make sure that we address uh, questions. Um, okay, so it sounds um, like you've got some clarity in what you want to accomplish this year. That's awesome. Uh, as you've brought on your agents uh, to, to support you and your team effort, what have been some of the challenges that you've seen in going from, you know, your own business with support staff to now agent team members um, that are, are, are part of the team? Um, I think the biggest thing is, is letting go of my own production. Um, I'm going to have to let, let that slide a little bit to give time to the, the agents on the team. Um, I'm out training with them, knocking with them. I'm answering more questions than I've ever answered. Um, <laughs> right. I, it's crazy, but my goal's always been to have 10 under contract at all times. Um, and that's, I'm a big numbers person rather than how much money I'm making with each check. So numbers are huge for me. So that's been probably my most challenging thing is for me to let go of my personal, I want to sky's the limit and hit these crazy numbers and now push to my team to have them start bringing in the high numbers and having them have the success through the coaching and training. So tell us a little bit about what it is that you're focused on as it relates to the numbers. So being a numbers guy, what are, the, what are you focused on as far as that those matrix that you're that you're having conversations around with your team members. So I, I think for any real estate agent, a lot of times we get caught up in man, we closed a three hundred thousand dollar transaction. We just made nine thousand dollars. That's enough for most people to live on every month, and they get lackadaisical after they hit those numbers. So for me, it's a number of transactions per month that I'm hitting. It's not a dollar amount that I'm making. And so I never, and none of my team members, I, I have them focus 100% on a number, not a dollar amount, because the dollar amounts will follow the numbers. And so once my team members are on the team for more than 90 days, and they've hit their probationary period, they're required to sell three transactions a month. Don't care if it's a buyer or, or a, a listing, but they need to close three a month. And as part of that, are you having uh, like uh, consistent weekly, daily kind of accountability calls where you're looking at uh, prospecting numbers or, or what kind of lead indicators are you looking at that supports the, that three a month result? Great question. So we're, we're doing script training every day. Um, every day from 12 to 1230, we're script training here at the office. Um, we do 411s weekly to go over their goals, where they're at. We implement a 15-day protocol at the last 15 days of the month if they're not where they should be. And our standard for our team is 125 contacts a month. Um, never mind, a week, excuse me, a week. 125 uh, contacts a week. And if they're not doing that, the last of uh, uh, the 15-day protocol, they go to 250 contacts a week just to be able to hit their goals. So we, we monitor pretty closely. And what's the standard for a contact? Is it voice-to-voice -voice conversation? Is it dials? Like what, how do, you, how do you set that standard with your team? What's the expectation? It either needs to be voice-to-voice, person-to-person. -voice, uh, um, if it's someone they know and it's an SOI, it can be a text message or a Facebook message. But it needs to have in there that they've asked them if they've thought about buying or selling a house or if they know of anybody looking to buy or sell a house. That's yes, yeah, I love that. I, I think that's one of the areas in, in our leadership that sometimes we can do better at is uh, getting really clear on what the standard is that, that that we're tracking. So I love that you've identified not only voice to voice, but you've also got to, uh, you know, uh, sh share the value proposition, what you're doing, make that invitation. That's awesome. Well, and we make it easy, Matt, because we do the events every month. So literally they can reach out and call um, and invite them to an event. So it's an easy contact. But then while they've got them on the phone, say, hey, by the way, do you know anybody looking to buy or sell a house? Or have you found anybody that's, that you could refer to us? Yeah. I love the, um, the strategy around events, whether it's a client appreciation event, an open house event, uh, because it makes that, those really become the excuse for our prospecting. And it makes it so much easier in many cases to do the calls when we're having some sort of excuse for the call and, and can invite people. So you're saying that you're, uh, you mentioned that you're doing a client appreciation event or a client event monthly. 
Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Like th th that's more than most people do, which is awesome. And I, I love that strategy generally, but tell us about how you're doing it on a monthly basis. So I'll give you an example. We've got on May 26, um, we have started a, a charity fundraiser. Um, it's called Cops and Joggers. So May 26- Cops and Joggers, I like it. Cops and Joggers. So May 26, we've um, highlighted the Saratoga Springs Police Department um, and we're calling everybody under the sun to come out and, and run in a 5K. All the proceeds go to help out the Saratoga Springs Police Department by trauma kits for each patrol car. So we're hoping to raise $9,000 that's just one event. Um, we also, two weeks ago, we did Avengers, um, rented out two movie theaters and just packed it with, with people. And that was another way we were able to reach out. So that's just a couple ideas we've done this month. Love it. Yeah. I, uh, and I love the idea of uh, tagging some of that um, event to some philanthropic effort. We had one of our offices do a Paint the Town Red group open house uh, event. And as part of that, they did a food collection thing for uh, one of the housing um, food banks in our community. And I just love when we can do some of those things. It's, uh, it, it's really strong and smart from a marketing standpoint and growing your business and influence. Uh, but at the same time, it's an opportunity for us to give back and make a difference, which is, which is awesome. Yeah, so I got a, a question from one of our uh, listeners today that asked, uh, what, what's your one thing right now? What is the thing that you're focused on? And maybe as part of that question, I will uh, expand that to, to ask about, as the leader of the team, the one that's really driving the business right now, maybe walk us through what your daily schedule looks like. So I'm a guy that goes to bed um, super early. I'm, I'm always in bed by 10.30, most of the time 10. Um, I'm up at 5.30 every morning without an alarm clock. I just wake up. Um, my wife sleeps in till about 7.30, I watch the kids, then I'm off to the gym. I'm at the office by 10, 10.30 every day. Um, and from there, it's dive into calls, um, meet with my admin to see what needs taken care of. Uh, we do our, tra our uh, what is it, script training at 12.30. And from that point on, it's, it's full on contacting. I still hold myself to a requirement of, of getting as many contacts as I possibly can while trying to maintain and, and handle clients. So. Um, but I'm usually home 6.30, 7.30 at night every day, um, unless I've got clients that need me to, to help them with some or listing appointments. Yeah, nice. Great. And if you kind of identified what's your one thing that you're really focused on right now to improve your business or to, to provide value to your team, uh, what would that be? Training, marketing, um, dialing in on, on all of the systems that Keller Williams has in place that, that all these other millionaire and real estate agents are making their money with, getting those systems dialed in, and then teaching my guys to do what I did my first year and get them to be successful and get deals under contract. Yeah, awesome. Uh, share with us just a little bit. Um, well, I, if you think about this past year, what were some of the most impactful classes that you attended or events that you attended, books that you read? Like if you were going, if, if I was a new agent and, and, and I was kind of trying to understand the business, what are some of those things that you would say, these are the books to read, these are the classes to go to, like this is how you really should spend your time as far as personal development growth uh, this, this first year? So um, I went to, to Bold with Keller Williams. That was a great, great course. Um, I did Career Visioning um, with Keller Williams as well, another great course that I, I felt like was, was way worth the money and, and I would tell people to go to. Um, books, I, I love books. Um, MREA, I've probably read that two or three different times. I read The One Thing. I feel like that was super impactful for, for me to be able to dial in on one thing rather than try to accomplish everything in real estate in my first year. Um, so that was huge. Um, psychology is selling. Um, I probably read that a couple times a year and I have for five years. I love that book. Psychology um, of selling. Okay. I haven't read that one. Brian Tracy. Um, but it just teaches question-based selling. So you're asking questions to help people come up with the answer rather than selling them. Nice. So that's a great book. Um, five things that determine all life's outcomes. That's another great book. Um, do you remember who wrote that? Brett Hayward. But that's another great book. We do a book club in our office. We read a book a month and the happiness advantage we're, we're I mean, we're huge into books and, and growth and learning. So 
Um, there's probably a pile of books I'm forgetting off the top of my head, but Compound Effect. Um, I mean, there's there's so many really good books. I would say if you're not studying every day and reading books or listening to them as you're driving to appointments, you're missing a huge opportunity for growth. Yeah, so to- totally agree. And I, I would echo that. I, I, I'm absolutely a believer that our businesses and lives grow to the extent that we do personally. And and unless we're really spending the time and effort to to develop our personal selves, creating that personal development plan, uh, we're going to start hitting uh, that, that glass ceiling. We're going to hit those plateaus. So uh, what book are you guys reading now? Um, we're reading five things that determine all life's outcomes again. Nice. So, okay. I'm going to check that one out. That's the book of the month. Okay. So uh, your cousin, your friend, someone calls you, says they're thinking about getting into business, uh, would love you know, to get your advice. What advice are you giving them? I tell them to get in. If they're going to work, there's so many agents right now and everybody thinks the market's so saturated with real estate agents. Um, if you'll come on and work and answer your phone and do things other agents won't, won't there is more business than you can handle. Isn't that so true? It's a great time. Yeah. I, I get that question a lot. Like it seems like there's a million real estate agents and I'm just, I'm wondering if I should get in the business. And, and I answer the same way. I'm just like, there's, there, yes, there are a lot of real estate agents and the opportunity is enormous uh, because so many of them either don't treat it like a job, uh, aren't focused on doing the right activities, aren't willing to put in the work um, or, or just aren't following the models of success. And, and so that creates massive, massive opportunity for those that are willing to do it, the, the ones that are willing to put in the work. And, and so I would agree. Uh, so I think, um, I think we've kind of connected on the questions. Is, it's, I, I'll, I'm curious, are you doing anything with social media? I, I know a lot of people that are, are having good success are really focused on social media. Are you doing anything like that as part of your business strategy? I do. We use Facebook a ton. Um, every sell that I've gotten will be posted on Facebook with me holding up a sign saying just sold or, or um, new buyer. Um, and that's been huge in my success for people seeing the volume I'm doing. Um, anytime I get a new listing, it goes on there to say new listing. If you know of anybody, have them contact me. I try to post weekly uh, market updates. Um, so Facebook, I think, is a huge tool for anybody. Um, I'm told that I'm old now and I only use Facebook and I need to get on all the other ones. So we're now molding into Instagram and, and Twitter and, and LinkedIn and, and trying to network all of those as well. Brother, if you're going to bed at 10:30 and waking up at 5:30, that was news enough for me to think you're old. So I knew it. I knew it was coming. <laughs> uh, just kidding. Hey, uh, okay. So tell us maybe a little more about that. Are you? Is that just? A lot of times people ask me, is, is that a business Facebook page? Should I be doing that on a personal Facebook page? I mean, do you have any uh, recommendations on how you're handling your? So Facebook we have social- a business Facebook page that we push people to. Just the D2D real estate team. Yeah. Um, most of my stuff I post on both my, I don't post a lot of personal stuff on my own real, on my own Facebook page. I'm not much of a Facebook guy unless it has to do with business. Um, and so I post everything on both, but uh, most of my personal Facebook page posts are real estate related. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I tend to be the same way. And I think that's probably an opportunity for me to be better. I need to do better about posting some social, like some actual elements of my life versus just business stuff. Right. I think I'd probably get better results to be honest with you. People probably get sick and tired of hearing about my business stuff. So uh, true. anyways, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so uh, Dwayne, if, if anyone would like to kind of just uh, follow you or connect with you, how best for them to follow you? Where, where can they follow you on uh, or find you on Facebook? Um, just the D2D team, KWD 2 d team. They can find us there and follow some of the stuff we're doing. Um, they can find me on Facebook and, and add me there. And I'd be happy to answer any questions or do whatever I can to, to help support. Good. Awesome. Thank you. And then um, what, does, uh, what does your business look like five years from now? Um, I actually want to be expanded all over outside of Utah in multiple states and, and be growing this business. I, I really want to be on stage at Family Reunion within five years. So we're, we're taking the high road and trying to push this as fast as we can push it. Yeah. For those that aren't familiar with this idea of expansion, it's really um, incredible. It's an incredible opportunity. I mean, I think when I look at uh, different business opportunities and, and potential return on invested dollar and effort, 
the expansion model is incredible. And I, and I think there's a number of people that probably try to expand too early before they've really ironed out their, their systems of models. But basically it's this concept of, of taking that business you develop locally and then utilizing the Keller Williams backbone with our offices all over the country and quickly rolling out that same business model um, in, in locations you know, all across the country. And it's an incredible opportunity. Well, with the success that you've had, the focus that you've had, your commitment to coaching and education, uh, Dwayne, I have no doubt uh, that we'll see on, on stage at Keller Williams Family Reunion in the next few years. So congratulations on all your success. And um, with that, I appreciate you being on the show. Uh, any last parting things that you'd like to share with the group? No, just work hard, guys. Be honest, work hard, and, and you'll find success. Just get out and do what other agents will. Man, I love that. Uh, and so true, right? One of the things that I try to talk about so frequently with our group is uh, we always want to be that high level professional and, and honesty, integrity. Uh, one of my very favorite things that was uh, so attractive to me about uh, joining Keller Williams uh, years ago uh, was Mo Anderson uh, saying and talking about the fact that no single transaction was ever worth uh, our reputation, right? So uh, Dwayne, appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Uh, appreciate everyone joining us for today's show. Uh, certainly look forward to having you join us in the future. If you saw value in the show today, please uh, be sure to leave us a comment below. Would also love for you to share this uh, with your friends and family uh, on the social media platform of your choice. Uh, you can look and find our past episodes on our YouTube channel, kwutah.tv. So kwutah.tv. And uh, certainly continue to follow me on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Matt Green Utah, all one word. And, uh, and you can kind of keep updates on us as well on our Facebook page for the Keller Williams Utah region at facebook.com forward slash KW Utah. All right. Thanks again for joining us. Have a great day. Peace out.